Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Okay. Now, before you attack Does anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello everyone, my name is DJ. This is the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and today we are talking about secret layers and stranger things. That's right, there are eight new cards and a clue token announced last week in Magic's newest secret layer drop, this time featuring the characters from Stranger Things. Some background information, you can buy these cards right now for $40 non-foil, $50 foil. They are exclusive and mechanically unique cards right now. Wizards of the Coast has said that these will be reprinted with magic names and magic art in Streets of New Capanna boosters next spring. They will also have improved frequency versus their original plan of just throwing the cards on the list. So that's good. If you don't like these cards but like what they do, you can pick up your magic versions, hopefully inexpensively, in just a little bit. Now, reprinting in the magic style seems to be what people wanted when they were originally really upset at the Walking Dead secret lair, but people are still pretty angry. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Right now, I'll give you my two cents. Uh, I don't like the style or subject matter of these cards, but also I don't care if you like the style or like Stranger Things. I think Wizards of the Coast does a great job of making a really good product. I think Magic is an incredible project. And when I talk to them or read about the people involved, I get a feeling that they are very passionate and invested in magic. But then I have to I have to remember that at its core, it's a business. They're trying to maximize growth and money. Oh, and also like they sell one of the most predatory things, like the gambling aspect of booster packs. The original loot boxes, they they, they just drive me crazy, just the design of them in general. And so I'm not holding them to the highest standard straight off the bat. But honestly, this feels like a special product and special products are a natural progression for a growing game, I think. I also don't think that this is any more of a cash grab than everything else that they do. You know, they have to secure new intellectual property, design new cards, commission new art. It feels like they're trying to expand a game and appease a population that just kind of likes collecting or likes Stranger Things. I feel like that's a good way to expand band magic and try to bring in new people because we all know that there are huge barriers to entry to this game. You know, I don't think I'm their ideal audience for this product and actually I don't think many of you are either. Maybe you are. But all I can hope is that they put a lot of care and thought into this whole product line, the universe is beyond product line, and hopefully some of it will resonate with me and I'll get some cool new cards out of it. All right, now that most people have stopped the video and are rage commenting down below, Let's evaluate these cards. Now remember, these will have magic equivalents in the spring. And by the way, these promos aren't gonna get into people's hands like tomorrow. Secret layers take forever. First up, we have Mind Flayer the Shadow. Four black, black, black for a 9-9 legendary enchantment creature horror. Mind Flayer the Shadow isn't a creature unless you control three or more permanents you don't control. At the beginning of your end step, exile the bottom card of each opponent's library face down. For as long as those cards remain exiled, you may look at them, you may cast permanent spells from among them, and you may spend mana as though or mana of any color to cast these spells. Seven mana is a lot for this. I like that it's not immediately a 9-9 creature because I think an enchantment is more likely to stick around and give me the value of playing my opponent's spells. I hate that it's only permanent spells and I hate that it's cast. You know, so if it was play, you could get lands. Cast, you can't get any lands. And this is only permanent, so Planeswalkers, Artifacts, Enchantments, Creatures are, I feel like instants and sorceries are so important for Commander that this is just gonna whiff a lot. Honestly, a seven mana do nothing that needs you to invest more mana into it, is it that good? I mean, I'd like to compare this to Mind's Dilation. A seven mana enchantment that basically just gets random spells off the top of your opponent's library, but this lets you cast them for free. And I'm thinking that Mind's Dilation is just way better, but it's also not competitive in Commander. This is like a dirtily enchantment that's just there for fun. And so I'm thinking that Mind Flayer, the Shadow, is also going to be a dirtily enchantment that's just there for fun. Let's talk about our first hero. It is Chief Jim Hopper. Two red white for a 4-4 legendary human soldier with menace. Whenever Jim Hopper attacks, investigate once for each non-token attacking creature. And then the most important part, friends forever. You can have two commanders if both have friends forever. This is the most powerful part of almost all of these cards. So we're gonna be thinking with a mindset of, oh, like 
Chief Jim Hopper can be paired up with any of the kids. Like this is this is good. Okay. Now, initially, Friends Forever is better than we all think because it does let you expand your commander options, try different colors, but it's just having access to that other card. Even if it's just a fine card in your deck is very, very good. You're a card up and you can control your strategy a little bit better. All right, so Chief Jim Hopper, what about this clue you get for attacking? Well, a clue you get for attacking is not that great. Um, just getting value or cards worth of value when you attack in Boros, is fine, you can do that. That's that's a thing that you can find a lot of stuff about, is like, well, what can I get when I attack? Even a card like Thorough Investigation literally gives you a clue whenever you attack. But Chief Jim Hopper can get you lots of clues because you're getting one for each non-token attacking creature. So this is okay, all right? <laughs> First off, uh, it makes you overcommit to the board. But when you do overcommit to the board, you have a backup plan of being able to draw those clues. So there's definitely some push and pull here and I like it. One thing to keep in mind is that if you go crazy and produce 10 clues, you still need to find the mana to draw those cards and the mana to deploy the cards that you've drawn. So there are diminishing returns after the first couple of clues every single turn. Let's move on to Dustin, Gadget Genius. Two, white, blue, for a two, three, legendary human. Tap to add two colorless mana. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate artifact abilities. And it has friends forever. We have seen this text before. You know, if we look at Dalakos, Crafter of Wonders, this is a three mana merfolk artificer. Tap to add two colors mana. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate the abilities of artifacts. Equipped creatures you control are flying in haste. We can compare it to Dustin and say like, okay, well, Dustin isn't doing that great, but what if it's just like a Hedron Archive in your command zone? That's good. So if you are running an artifact deck, Dustin just being in your command zone could be quite good. Next up, we have Eleven, the mage. One blue, black, red for a legendary human wizard. She's a three, five. Your maximum hand size is 11. Cute. Whenever Eleven, a mage, attacks, you draw a card and you lose one life. Then, if you have 11 or more cards in your hand, you may cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand without paying its mana cost. Wow, okay. Uh, friends forever. So you gotta get to 10 cards, attack with it, and then if you draw your 11th card, you get to cast whatever you want. Free casting, it could be anything. So <laughs> what is it about free casting? Well, there's other cards that let us cast things for free. Let's compare it to Omnispell Adept, which is just a dirtily human wizard that's not played very much. This thing costs 18 cents, and it just lets you cast an instant sorcery spell without paying its mana cost. Okay. What about something a little bit closer? Maybe uh, uh, Jaleva, Nefalia Scourge. This is the same casting cost also in Grixis, and it just generates these huge spells that you can cast um, when you attack. Of course, it's off the top of your library, you know, so maybe that's not as good. Maybe Atali is a better example, Primal Storm. Being able to cast from everyone's deck off the top of your library, casting a lot of stuff. I feel like I can cheat big things into play easier than with Eleven the Mage. Um, I do like the idea of attacking and drawing. That's pretty cool. I feel like I could attack and draw a card here and there. I think that's actually the better part of this for sure, because I think that getting to 10 and then it, to cards in hand and then successfully attacking with 11 is just like not gonna happen. So I would be be wary of this, but in, in the end, I think it's a fine card. I think the best thing, by the way, is that it's three colors, which allows you to, to expand your color choices within these friends forever. Let's talk about Lucas, the sharpshooter. Blue and a red for a 1-3 human. Tap, sacrifice an artifact. Lucas, the sharpshooter, deals one damage to target creature. Goad that creature. Okay, so pinging something is fine, you know, but there's a lot of things out there that can just tap to deal the damage wherever you want. And they don't have to sacrifice an artifact. That's a pretty big cost, honestly. But what about the goad? The goad is exciting because goad is a powerful mechanic. Let's take a look at things that goad. There are only 19 cards that can goad your opponent's creatures. That's not a lot. And if you're playing a goad deck, then maybe this could fit in, but it's definitely not gonna be the most efficient. Like Bloodthirsty Blade costs two mana, one to equip wherever you want, and that creature's just goaded. You know, that's, that's it. 
you know, Sly Instigator has a tap ability that goads something, or just Vengeful Ancestor. You know, a flying spirit dragon that whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you can just goad whatever you want. So I feel like the sacrifice on Lucas is not gonna be a good enough payoff just for the damage or for the goad. All right, let's talk about Max the Daredevil. One red green for a 3-2 legendary human with haste. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, untap target creature, then investigate. Of course, friends forever. I really like the second spell aspect of it. I think there's a direct comparison to Jorian Ruin Diver. It's also a three mana legendary. When you cast your second spell each turn, draw a card. Drawing a card's a little bit better than investigating. You do get some this cool untapped value with Max the Daredevil, which is kind of cool. But ultimately, I like the just value that you get from playing a normal game of magic. All right, we've got Mike the Dungeon Master. One green white for a 2-2 legendary creature human. Two tap. Choose target creature card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Return it to the battlefield tapped. Friends forever. This is pretty good. You can do things with this. So one thing you could do is just, hey, you send your creature into combat, it dies, you know, bring it back again. Someone kills your creature, up, oh, I'm gonna bring it back again. All that stuff is great. Uh, of course, there's things like you can sacrifice your own creatures and bring them back again. That's like next level, you know, you get in these loops. And in fact, you can totally get into loops with this with a card like uh, Great Oak Guardian. Great Oak Guardian untaps all of your creatures. And so if you have a way to generate mana by sacrificing Great Oak Guardian, and then you tap Mike to bring it back again, it untaps Mike, that's pretty good. Uh, or if you have other tap effects on the battlefield, Great Oak Guardian untaps all of them. And there are tons of other creatures that untap when they ETB. So maybe you can figure out some loops going on with Mike the Dungeon Master. I don't think that these loops will replace existing Selesnya loops like uh, Renegade Rallyer or Safi Eric's Daughter or Sun Titan even. You know, uh, having to tap and needing mana keeps this from being tremendously broken. And so I think that this could just be a fun, fair way to do this, uh, whereas all your other ways are a little bit more combo focused. And finally, the last of the crew is Will the Wise, white, black for a one, two, legendary human. When Will the Wise enters or leaves the battlefield, each opponent may investigate. Each opponent who doesn't loses one life. You investigate X times where X is one plus the number of opponents who investigated this way. Friends forever. So, we have sort of a bigger Thraben Inspector. <laughs> Remember, we have to compare this to Thraben Inspector, a one mana, one to investigate. So is this doing that much more than a Thraben Inspector? Is that one extra mana doing enough? Well, if that one extra black mana is just doing one damage to each opponent, no, I'd rather have a Thraben Inspector. If that one black mana is generating me three extra clues, then it's doing a great job. So I guess it just depends on your meta and how people are playing, but I think Will the Wise is, uh, it, it underperforms a little bit. Maybe we have ways to loop it because again, it's enters or leaves the battlefield because if we have ways to utilize those clues, utilize the damage, get Will into some sort of loop, then your opponents are either forced to give you tons and tons of clues or they're gonna die. So maybe there's some way to weaponize Will the Wise. Tell me in the comments down below. Of course, let's not forget about this cool clue token. I like it. I think it's good. Might use it every so often. And this is the newest secret layer drop. Ultimately, I think that all the cards are a little bit underwhelming, but partner is busted. So these are going to be really good cards when you start partnering them together. All right, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this product. Maybe what you think of Secret Layers in general. I don't want it to be chaos in the comments, but I do like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for liking, commenting, all those subscribers out there. I also want to thank Cool Stuff Inc. They're the sponsor of the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. If you use the coupon code JUMBO5, you can save 5% off your order. I also want to thank my patrons. They're amazing and they support this channel every single day in and out. Thank you, patrons. And thank you again. Have a wonderful day, and if you're interested in secret lairs, don't let them slip away. All right, everyone. Bye-bye.